How does technology allow cars to become collision proof? Well, certainly between advanced sensors, imaging equipment, as well as GPS navigation. You know, you have the Google cars out there, the DARPA cars out there. Seven states have legalized uh, driverless vehicles now. So the technology works today, which we're not talking about a flying car, we're talking about a car that works today. And it's our commitment to make that happen that's the, the big change. The government is doing something right now. Uh, I don't know how many people are aware, but they're doing a connected car field trial in Ann Arbor. It uh, launched last August uh, involving 3,000 cars uh, using de um, uh, short range communication, specifically to have cars communicate with one another to avoid accidents. I don't know if, if you know this, but four companies have announced that they'll have automated driving cars in the market within the next 12 months. Audi, Mercedes, BMW, and uh, Volvo. 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 And in Audi's case, it drives up to 39 miles an hour on Bayshore. Um, we're, we're about to enter into this great social experiment because, you know, you're still responsible. You may sell these cars from Audi, but I have an Audi parked out front. It's Bluetooth does not pair properly on my audio. <laughs> There's no freaking way I'm letting this thing drive me down the highway yet. Uh, <laughs> Well, self-driving car, Michael, is magical thinking, too. No, I'd I, just, I just, listen, I was going, I was, I was arriving late to work the other day, and I saw the Google self-driving car by the buzz by me, uh, driving much better than I think I was. Um, and I, there's, I don't know if the person had his hands on the wheel, but there was some, you know, the big whirly gig on top of the thing. It's kind of like, it's like Star Trek, you know what I mean? I think, in our mind, um, the vision is right. I mean, there is a chance that we're going to get to driverless, and that will be a part of the total system. So collision-proof car means... Exactly that. It can be a very light uh, vehicle that's very application oriented. And if they don't collide, the whole game changes because all the safety equipment goes away. Last month I was with a German CEO of a company that makes airbags for cars. And after I gave this talk, he came up with kind of a white, whiter looking face. And he said, you know, our board has never considered the possibility that the world wouldn't need airbags. And certainly, you know, with collision-proof cars, you don't need airbags, you don't need steel-proof this and that, you don't need all the collision tests. It totally changes that part. The inside of the car is going to change a lot, as you say. Right now, cars are sold by acceleration, and then they're going to be sold by comfort rather than acceleration. They'll be face-to-face, -face, so they're actually a pleasant experience. Your child will say, Mommy, are we there already? Rather than, are we there yet? Well, if we buy all this stuff, it, it, it pretty much means the end of the, the car insurance industry, doesn't it, David? Yeah, I think that's be obsolete, yeah. Anyone there from, here, from, from the car insurance, you should be looking for new work. Andrew, the minute that you realize that you can uh, be in this thing and surf your email and not touch the car, that will be awesome. <laughs>